welcome to the stage, Dr. David Neiman. I'd like to share with you some of the data that we've collected. We didn't even know about ASEA about a year and a half ago when we were approached. So we entered into this uh, from the outside, and I'm going to share the data that we have collected. Basically, we're just going forward with the data as we collect it, and we're learning more and more about what this drink does to the human body. I'm going to share with you all of the data that we've collected to this point, and we have much to um, still learn, more to measure, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit as well. When you exercise heavily, you have different things that happen in the body. There's oxidative stress, there's inflammation, there are immune changes. And so I look at nutritional countermeasures, sometimes whole foods like bananas. And we had a paper published recently where we compared bananas with a sports drink and showed that bananas support high intensity effort just as well as a sports drink. ASEA asked us to do a complete composition analysis of the beverage. We needed to do this because we needed to know what is in the drink and then have what we call a biologic, plausible pathway to explain some of the findings we're going to share with you. Unless we know what's in the drink, we can't really publish the data. We must have that information. Here are the data. <clears throat> the most important part of this finding was that that peak there and this peak, beyond any doubt, in the minds of the scientists that we work with, indicated that there are signaling molecules that have been captured in the drink. And the predominant one is a superoxide. This is a reactive molecule that does create signaling in the body. So this was of huge significance to our team because we feel that this will allow us to go forward um, in all of the publications that we have, and that scientists will say it's very likely that these signaling molecules are doing some of the things that we're about to show you. It's a, it's a very unique part of the beverage that, uh, frankly, the, the analytic chemists that we work with are surprised at, that somehow these signaling molecules, which typically are very transient, have been complexed and are in the drink and do not escape the beverage. So that's a very important issue, at least from our viewpoint. We really couldn't move forward with anything without this information. Okay, so then we have another very important lab on our campus. It's the metabolomics lab. Now, every time you exercise, or when you eat something, there is a metabolic reaction in the body that results in what we call metabolic intermediates. These are small molecules that are formed as food is metabolized or as your muscles contract and different processes exist, and carbohydrate is burned for fuel, and fat is burned for fuel. You get these intermediate molecules that are formed, hundreds of them. And only in the last five years have scientists developed equipment that can actually capture the shift in these intermediate molecules that we call metabolites. And it's a, it's a rapidly growing science. We uh, are excited to be a part of this field because we're on the cutting edge. Very few areas in the world, very few labs in the world have looked at, especially in my lab, the effect of exercise on the change in these metabolites. So uh, we've been heavily involved in this during the last three years. And we decided that taking a look at the metabolite formation after drinking ASEA, both acutely and chronically, would be an important place to begin. If you look at each dot, so first, let's take a look at the blue dots. That's when we had some athletes drink placebo. It was a placebo. They didn't know if it was ASEA or not. The blue is when they drank that every day for a week, 
And then the red is when they drank a sea every day for a week. Each dot represents a cluster of scores of metabolites that were measured in the body. Athletes drinking a sea had what we call a metabolome or a cluster of metabolites that were distinctly different than when they didn't drink a sea. One metabolite is a fatty acid, and you can see the huge difference in the same individual, the same athlete, when they drank a sea versus placebo. Here's another fatty acid, which was in greater abundance in these athletes, palmitic acid. That's like a four or five fold difference in the level of that fatty acid in that individual. And then when we exercised those individuals, you can see there that the red represents when they were on a SIA, and then the uh, gray is when they were on placebo. There is not only a pre-exercise difference, is that this drink is bringing fats out of what we believe is the abdominal fat area and making them available to the athlete before they even get going. Then the muscles will use those fats and spare the carbohydrate that's in the muscle, allowing the person to go longer. More on that in just a minute. The, the next step, that was with the athletes. And then we thought, well, they were drinking a SIA every morning for a week. And then they came in the lab and we saw that the fatty acids had built up. So we thought, well, how quick does this all happen? If you drink a SIA, how quickly will your molecules or metabolites shift in the body? So we set up a study with six men, six women, and in random order, we do everything randomized, placebo, double-blinded. We do no other research other than that. That's the purest design to remove all human and subject bias. In research, it's so easy, if you believe in something, to be affected by that belief. You, we have to remove that. And every study we do, we make sure that neither the researchers or the subjects know what they're taking, or also that it's in randomized order. Doing that with 12 people, they came overnight fasted in the morning at 7.30. We took a blood sample. We put a catheter in their vein, and then they either uh, drank a C or a placebo. And then we took blood samples 30 minutes later, 90 minutes later, and then two and a half, three and a half, six hours. Next morning, three days, seven days later. So a lot of blood samples from 12 people, and they had to come in two times, either acutely just taking one dose, one four-ounce dose of a C or placebo. So one four-ounce dose at seven in the morning on an empty stomach. Really, the big finding is in these 12 people, that's the 12 people when they're drinking placebo, the same 12 people, 30 minutes after drinking four ounces of ASEA, there's a significant shift. And this is what happened an hour and a half later, and this is what happened three and a half hours later, and then this is the next morning. As soon as you drink ASEA, for reasons that we're still going to figure out. We have so much science still to do. And, and the good thing about this company is that they have put themselves on the road to scientific discovery to figure out what's going on. It, and <clears throat> there, there are so few companies in this area that really want to take the risk of finding out through science. <laughs> you know, it is risky for a company. This is double-blinded, placebo-controlled research. You're sticking your neck out, and if it doesn't work, you're exposed, you know? Nothing. There's a lot that's going on when you drink this drink. What we got to figure out is how, we're still figuring that out, and what does it all mean? And we got some great studies lined up uh, to help look at all that. A after having done a lot of this, we decided that we had to set up an animal study. And that's usually the, the first thing you want to do. 
is we showed that fatty acids are mobilized and we theorized that those fats should mean that when you exercise, whether you're an animal or a human, that the fats would be used sparing the carbohydrate in the muscle, allowing exercise to continue at, uh, at the same pace for a longer time. So Dr. Amy Knob is a rodent exercise expert. <laughs> and she really is. I, I didn't think that was funny, but it's, <laughs> that is what she is. And I hired her as an assistant professor in my group. She has a PhD from UNC Charlotte. She's done a lot of work on brain dopamine receptor density and physical activity relationships in rodents and has run many, many rodents along the way. <laughs> so that's what Amy does. And Amy, why don't you come on out here? So like Dr. Neiman said, when we, when we saw the metabolomics data, with the humans, and we're seeing the fatty acid shifts. Um, we, we started to hypothesize that maybe this would affect um, performance uh, from an exercise standpoint. So we decided to first test it in animals. Uh, we have this model in our lab where we can do this, and we wanted to test endurance capacity, uh, fuel substrate utilization to confirm some of the things that we're hypothesizing with the metabolomics data. We looked at inflammation. We also looked at oxidative stress, actually, in the muscles. And again, you know, all, all of this was kind of leading us to these hypotheses that um, ASEA, if indeed is causing a mobilization of free fatty acids, then endurance capacity would actually be increased or improved in mice taking ASEA when compared to placebo. So what we did was we took four groups of mice and Two, uh, two of the groups got ASEA treatment, and two of the groups got placebo. And within the ASEA group, 15 of the mice were, were exercise endurance tested. And then we also had a group that was sedentary. And that's important for comparison purposes, just to see what ASEA is doing, regardless of the exercise. And again, the placebo was treated the same way. They took ASEA, or placebo, for, for seven days, and at the end of those seven days, we took them through this endurance protocol. So they were working out about 80% of their VO2 max. Um, and then they, we just let them stay at that speed until they, they couldn't go any longer to see how long they could go at that intensity. And here's the data from that. So the, the red bar is the placebo group we now know, and again, we were blinded to this when we, when we actually did the study, so we didn't know what group was taking what. Um, the placebo group, um, they were running just, you know, between 45 minutes and an hour at that speed, and interestingly, the ASEA group that we now know, they, were run, they actually were able to run about 29% longer than the placebo group. Here, here's where we get into the kind of mechanism of why they might have run longer. So we did in DC in the ASEA group that their rate of glycogen usage was about 33% lower than the placebo. So this does kind of go with the, the fatty acid mobilization theory that if they were able to use fats preferentially to the glycogen, then that, that is uh, a potential explanation for why they actually could run longer. And I think I'm going to hand it back over to Dr. Neiman at this point, and he's going to give you a summary. Thank you, Amy. That study um, is a big deal. Um, it really is. I mean, mice just don't run 29% longer for nothing. <laughs> so, I mean... <clears throat> And, and Kurt Richards told me I couldn't tell you how we made sure they were exhausted. He said I couldn't say anything, but the mice were so exhausted that they wouldn't respond to certain stimuli, and you could pick them up and they would just sit in your hand and not move. They were completely exhausted. So the fact that they went 29% longer on a SIA is a big, big deal. We now know using the most sophisticated scientific equipment available, that ASEA does have these signaling molecules, and especially a superoxide complex that is reactive, and we feel 
uh, lies behind the changes that, that we're talking about here. So that, that's a big deal to us. Another thing is, and, and it was also unexpected, but within 30 minutes of drinking a SIA, you will see small molecules being formed and shifting in the body. And, and it happens that quickly. Another um, issue is, is that these small molecules that we're looking at, these include signaling molecules and hormones and metabolic intermediates. We now know that if athletes drink ASEA for one week, that they have a shift in 43 different types of metabolites and that especially it's the molecules related to free fatty acids and energy intermediates that are shifted. This is the beginning of this road of scientific, uh, scientific discovery for this company. We're uh, very pleased to be a part of it. Um, we're looking forward to all the new studies that are uh, being planned and, and we hope to share many other data with you uh, as we continue taking a look at this drink. Thank you very much. I think what we've got here is absolutely phenomenal. Dr. Neiman's team has just confirmed what we all know about ASEA. It's increasing endurance, substantially. It, it's giving us a metabolite kick that, that's unbelievable. We're seeing an improvement in, in, in the performance, but also the output of the animals and the people involved in the studies. We already know and have seen anecdotally what is happening but now we can show it uh, scientifically, that, that's amazing. Anyone who drinks a SIA has a shift in their metabolism as though they are a marathoner without having run a marathon. They're burning fuel at levels of efficiency that normally only would have happened with somebody who is a highly trained athlete. This is the first step. I believe that there are going to be bigger and bigger announcements as time goes al along. Uh, that will uh, elucidate everything that uh, we have seen here and far beyond.